Okay, let's start learning about sorting. Before we begin discussing the algorithms about sorting, let's have some fun and let's see how actually it works with this example of four UNO cards over here on my table. So I'll show you how selection sort, bubble sort, and insertion sort works with these cards. And from there, you are supposed to recognize what's happening by the movements of these cards, how we sort these cards. And you are supposed to make these algorithms by yourself. So you better observe carefully. Let's start with learning about selection sort. So what is selection sort? In selection sort, we are going to scan the array. Let's say that these cards form our array. We are going to scan the array to find its smallest element and swap that smallest element with the first element. Then we are going to again scan starting with the second element and scan the element to the right to find the smallest and swap it with the second element. So on and so forth, we are going to continue for n minus one steps because the last element is element by itself. So if we have n items in our array, we need to iterate to n iterate um, until we are done with n minus one iterations. So are you ready to see how this works? Let's show with the cards. So as I said, in our first iteration, we'll scan all the cards. And initially, because we are supposed to pick the min from all these cards, let's just assume that our min is equal to our first element. And then we will proceed one by one and we'll compare. If the element is lesser than the first element, then we'll say, okay, then we have found a new min. And then our new min is five. Then we proceed one more. And we, if we find a lesser element than that, then we say, oh, we have found again a new min. So now min is two. Then we proceed until the last element of the array, but here four is not lesser than two. So this is like our min position won't shift from two. So once we found out that minimum element is two, what we do is swap it with the first element. And we are done with our first iteration. In our second iteration, we begin from our second element because we know the first element is already the smallest element. What we do is again the same thing. Initially, we say that min is five. Okay, let's assume that five is our min in the remaining item of the array. Then we compare it with the next element and see, okay, is five still the min? Yes, it is still the min because seven is greater than five. Then we proceed to our another elements in the array. So that's four over here. And we compare, is five still the min? Is it? Is five still the min? No, five is no more the min. Now four is min. And then we are done because our array is done. We have no more cuts. So once we have found out the min in this remaining part of the array, what we do is we swap that min with the second element of the array. After that, we continue the same process for the remaining elements. Now we are done with two elements. We continue the same process for the remaining elements. What we do is again, initially assume that the min is your first element and then compare with all the remaining elements in the array and see which one is the min. Find out your min and then swap it with the third item. So here you will compare seven with five and we'll see that yes, five is new min. And because now five is new min and there are no more elements. So we will swap our five with the third position item. And that's it, we are done. So for, in order to sort the cards or array of four elements, your four cards, we took three iterations. So we need n minus one iterations to pass through that. And every time in every iteration, we went through the remaining elements and we found out the minimum of those elements to swap it with the position accordingly, with the first position in the first iteration, second position in the second iteration, so on and so forth. 
that's it so what is it on your table now it's a sorted array correct if you do this if you can write a program to do this you have excelled your selection sort next let's see what happens with other sorts okay let's jumble our elements again because we need to start with an unsorted array now our second sort is bubble sort what happens in bubble sort as the name says bubble sort bubble sort it acts like a bubble the name bubble came with some reason and what happens when you observe the bubbles the largest bubble would pop automatically up right when you observe the bubbles the small bubbles will stay down and the, the larger the bubble it, it will be on the top so in bubble sort remember what happens to the bubble and then you can recall the bubble bubble sort in a swap what happens in bubble sort is the largest element will bubble to the top of the array how this would happen let's see how we proceed in bubble sort what we do in bubble sort is we start from the beginning we compare two elements and we see whichever is the smaller element we keep it to the left right we compare 7 and 5 if we are sorting the array in ascending order 5 is smaller than 7 so we swap these both once we are done with that then we proceed then we increment our pointer to compare so first we compared position 0 and position 1 now we will compare position 1 and position 2 again we do the same thing whichever is smaller we move it to the left hand side and the number that's larger we move it to the right hand side you understand what we are doing in this process we are bubbling up something that's large so then we swap these both element and we move the larger element to the right then again we continue doing same by incrementing both of our pointers to another next two elements so now our pointers are pointing to the element at index 0 1 and 2 so 2 and 3 again we compare both these elements and move the larger one to the right and smaller one to the left so we swap these both because 7 is greater than 4 what happened after single iteration the largest item in the array that we had bubbled up to the top of the array which is 7 but is our array sorted no our array is not yet sorted so we have to continue doing this process for n minus 1 number of time so we will start with our iteration k equals to 1 to n minus 1 and those many times we need to do the same process so our number of items are 4 so we'll do the same process for three times we are done with one time second time again we start and do the same process from the beginning we compare first two items in the array we move the larger one to the left smaller one to larger one to the right and smaller one to the left so 5 is larger move it to the right smaller to the left then we compare on the next two items whichever is larger move we move it to the right and smaller to the left swap those both then we compare next two items whichever is larger we move it to the left well 5 is not larger than 7 so we don't have to move anything after the second iteration we have got our two highest element bubbled up to the last two position of our array we are still left with the last iteration so what we do in this last iteration is again the same thing we compare the first two items and we move the larger item to the right the smaller item to the left larger is 4 smaller is 2 so we don't have to do anything again then we compare these two items larger to the right smaller to the left all everything is set over here and then finally we compare these both larger to the right smaller to the left everything is set so we are done that's it so for an array that has n items at max you have to do n minus 1 iterations and every time you perform the same thing you take two pointers you compare a of i and a of i plus 
And if A of I is greater than A of I plus one, then you swap. And then you increment I, and then you do the same thing. A of I, A of I plus one. If A of I is greater than A of I plus one, then swap, then increment I, so on and so forth. Simple bubble sort is done. Finally, let's look at our last sort, which is selection sort. So let's uh, make our array unsorted again. And last we will see insertion sort. Insertion sort, remember in, as the name says, insertion sort. So in insertion sort, you are going to insert some items. Imagine that you have a wall. Let's say this pencil is a wall. Everything to the left of this pencil is sorted. Everything to the right of this pencil is unsorted. So initially, initial position of our pencil is at its, le is at its left most because our whole array that's given to us is unsorted. We don't know what's there inside that. So we start with the leftmost position. First, we move our pencil by one item. Now, after we move our pencil by one item, we can say that everything to the left is sorted, everything to the right is unsorted because in the left, we have just one element. One element is always sorted by itself, right? You, the element doesn't have any competition to be compared against. Then what we do is from the right, we go ahead and pick the first item. Let's say when we pick the first item, we store this value in some another variable. Let's say we made, we initialized another variable value and we stored this item over there. Then, what we do is we move our pencil because we created a space over here. We will move our pencil by one item and the space is now towards the right of the pencil, the left of the pencil. Now, as the name says insertion sort, what we want to do is because we have stated that everything to the left of the pencil is always sorted. So this item that we have stored in some extra additional variable value. Now this, let's say that five is placed in this additional variable value. Five needs to be inserted in the left position of this array, wherever its position is according to the sorting of items. So in order to insert five, if we insert five directly in this black space position, it won't be sorted. So what we do is we compare the a value of this element that's there in our additional variable with all the elements beginning from the last. So we compare it with seven. If seven is greater than the, if the item over here is greater than the value of the item that we are looking to insert, then we move the element by one position until we reach the end of the array because we have four items, we have reached the end of the array and then we insert the item in that blank space. We will continue doing the same for the remaining items as well. So now we pick this two, we store it in a temporary value, we move our wall to one position to create this empty space. We compare the position of the value of this temporary, the position, the value of two with all the elements from the end of these, the side of the sorted array. So we compare it with seven. Now seven is greater than two. So we move seven to one position in the space. Then we compare it with five. Five is also greater than two. So we move five to one position in the space. And then finally we have reached the end of the array. So we will insert two. Finally, we take four as our last item. We move our wall one position. So we create the space on the left side of the array. We compare this item, which is four in my hand, with the last element, which is seven. Seven is greater than four. So we will be moving seven into the empty space to its right. Then we compare four with five because five is greater than four. So we will be moving five into the empty space to its right. Now, finally, we compare four with two 
two is no more greater than four. And that's the clue that we don't need to shift two to the empty space two is right because two is not greater than four, but rather we would insert four in this position. Finally, you see at the end, whenever the, our wall reaches the end of the array, we are done with our sorting. As a result, we get a sorted array. This is your insertion sort. Next, we will see how these sorts look in terms of algorithm. We will design pseudocode for that. And then you will write from pseudocodes, C++ code for each of these basic sorts, selection sort, bubble sort, and insertion sort.